Hello, hi everybody. My name is Jan Lemuri and we are coming to you from Morea. It's a beautiful island in the middle of Pacific, very strong with the presence of the Divine Feminine. It's amazing, amazing whale sanctuary. And we have been here swimming with whales for the last 14 days. And on our retreat of swimming with whales, we have a very, very special being that showed up here to be with us <laughs> and swing with whales with us. And she comes from Aotearoa, New Zealand. And she is a beautiful, beautiful presence. And um, yeah, I, I just loved, loved, loved from the moment you <laughs> go away. Uh, signed up for the retreat from the moment you you said you're coming I could feel behind your words behind your energy so much wisdom and so much whales <laughs> and every time you spoke to me I, I had these goosebumps flowing down my my shoulders and I was like oh my god we need to do something to share your wisdom your stories and also your culture with the world and so I, as, I, when you arrived, I think it was on the first day, I was like, oh, do you want to do an interview? <laughs> and um, when you said yes, <laughs> we, we decided we're going to find time and place to do this. So welcome. Thank you. And how would you introduce yourself to all the people watching? Well, um, uh, kia ora koutou. Uh, part of our tradition and culture is to start off with a karakia. A karakia is, is a prayer, but it also means when we break the word down, it means to activate the light within. So we, this is part of our culture to start anything with our karakia. So if I may start our karakia, okay. So to start I say ka inoi tato. So if we can just be in our prayer position. So mine would always be to, to close my eyes. Mai te rangi ki te whenua, mai te whenua ki te rangi. Pai here te a tātou ki te whakapono. Pai here te a tātou ki te rangi marie. Pai here te a tātou ki te ora e. Tihei mauri ora. Ai, kia ora. Ko pirungia te maunga, ko waipā te awa. Ko mani a puto te iwi, ko pūreki reki te marae, ko kafia te moana, ko tainui te waka, ko puwai Ormsby taku ingoa. If I may, I'd like to explain the understanding in respects to our culture of why this is done as our introduction. As our culture, we are part of the connectedness to the oneness. We call it kotahitanga. Kotahi. Tahi is one. Ta is the beginning of the word tāne for male. And he is the beginning of the word hinne for female. So it brings the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine together. So kotahitanga means our oneness. So to bring in our oneness, we acknowledge as water beings our pepeha. Our pepeha is pepe is when you're birthed as a baby and you come through with your lineage. You come through as we call it our whakapapa, our connection to all of our ancestors. So when we take that first breath, that is our pepeha. So we come through as water beings. And water in our language is why. Why means water, song, spirit, signature, soul, memory. So as water beings, when we introduce ourselves, we connect first 
to Ranginui, our Sky Father. Now Ranginui is where water first falls from the heavens and we call that the tears really of our Father Sky, the tears of Ranginui for the separation of his beloved Papatuanuku. Rangi, when we look at that word, it means Ra is the great central sun and Ni is the creative force. So Rangi is about our songs, the song of the universe, the universe, the in you verse, the song within you. So Rangi is songs and tones and tunes. And so with our mountains, our mountain, the word for our mountain is Mauna, Mauna. M-A-U is the first part of that word and it means to hold. So the water falls from the heavens and it touches the mountains first. We have the water, the snow, the hail. So it first enters the earth and it touches the mountains first. So hence we speak our mountain's name first. The water then glides down the, the mountain and flows into the rivers. So hence we mention the name of our river. And when we're doing that, you sense within you the waters singing, singing their name onward to whomever group you're with to touch their rivers. The waters will sing to each other. And from the rivers it flows down into our people. So we say, as I said, Maniaputu is the name of my people. From our people it comes down to our marae. Our marae is our sacred meeting house. And so from the marae it flows down to our tribe. So I say the name of my tribe, the Tainui. From the tribe, it flows down to the lakes or to the um, the waters within that that land mass. Um, so we go. It flows now to my ocean, which is called Kafia. Kafia is my name of my ocean, and from the ocean, it flows to the waka of my ancestors, and that's how my ancestors came to this land. So we speak the name of the waka. And then I mention my name. So my name comes last because I honour all that come before me and all the aspects of the mountain that my ancestors would have climbed, would have foraged food from, would have prayed, would have held ceremony, uh, would have collected the, the rako, the trees for shelter through the waters, the healing waters, the waters where we held ceremony for blessings, the waters where we swam, where we washed our clothes, where we gathered our, our kaimawana like watercress, the, the different um, freshwater foods, carrying on down to our people uh, and from the peoples also to the oceans and the oceans is where we collected our kaimawana our seafood, that would be our seafood department in today's world. And then from our seafood down to uh, acknowledging the waka, the vessel, the conveyance in which our ancestors made their way to these shores. And then from there, we mention ourselves. Kia ora. So when you introduce yourself, then you're honoring the journey of the water from That's the heaven, right. mm. through the mountains, rivers, your Mariah, your ocean, and the waka of the ancestors to yourself. That's right. Uh, would you say then the, the, the fact that water has memory and the crystalline structure is kind of innately celebrated through this introduction as well? Absolutely. We also see water as the, the house of God. It has a um, unifying principle. It's consciousness. So for us as, and if I may, I'd like to express, when we speak of our mountain, we bring that back to the oneness. And to, for us as humans um, on this earth adventure, it's about how we strive to attain this earth walk, how we strive to attain our highest potential here on this earth walk. When we talk about our river, we're also talking about the river of life that flows through our temple, our veins, our capillaries. When we talk about our ocean, uh, you know, we're coming down to the people, 
but it's also about us birthing through the embryonic fluids that originates from the source. We talk about our meeting house. Our meeting house represents really, it's um, Mother Earth. And our people would represent humanity. And our waka is actually the conveyance, the vessel in which you have come to this earth walk in. I like to call it my starship enterprise. So when we work with uh, meditation, when you enter in, you receive a prize. So our waka is my starship enterprise. Waka also represents wa is time and ka is to activate. So it is our starship enterprise where we travel through time. We are multidimensional beings. So that's my inner standing. Um, and that's come to me from different beautiful grandmothers that have crossed my, blessed my path and shared this intel with me. And that's how um, it resonates so deeply with me that I, I really do like to share this aspect of our culture. And thank you for receiving. Thank you for sharing it. And most people, including me, the first meeting with the Maori culture has been through the movie, The, the Whale Ride. Yes, yes. And, and seeing that, it was so full of encoded memories of, of things that we remember innately, but mm -hmm. maybe we never put words to. So anywhere in the world, people were watching that movie, they could feel mm -hmm. what's behind the story. So when I first talked to you and you said you are part of the whale rider tribe, part of that same tradition, I was like, oh my God, you can, from your life, from your teachings, also share more about the meanings behind everything that was shared in that movie. So I feel very honored to be able to ask questions about the whales, ask questions about your tribe's spiritual connection to the whales and everything that is passed down maybe inside stories that are metaphors, inside the teachings that you receive. So this was probably the biggest excitement for me to have this interview. Your relationship then to that um, story, how would you say it? Would you call it a story or is it is it more uh, when we call about the story of Paikea reaching New Zealand uh, on the back of a whale? It is part of our mythology. Um, we are descended from celestial navigators and wisdom walkers that transverse the vast oceans to arrive at the land we call Aotearoa, the land of the first light, the land of the ever shining light when you break up the word in its true translation, and the land of the long white cloud. Uh, our people wore the mantle of this land uh, with dignity and respect. Um, they hearkened to the ways of nature, they appreciated the elements, they identified with the oneness, they speculated with the cosmos, uh, reading the tides. The Marumataka is our moon calendar. So in a standing, the reasons for the seasons, um, reading, um, learning about the doctrine signature of plants. So Papatūnuku, that's the name we know as our Mother Earth. I like to call her Mama Tūnuku. Papa Tūnuku means Papa is space, Tua is to stand, and Unuku is the rainbow. So our Mother Earth, we see her as the crystalline being that she is, uh, with all the crystals that she holds with the different colours. As above, so below, as within, so without. So we have the rainbow in the heavens, we have the, and we, we know the rainbow in the heavens as the stairway for our fairy folk, our Turehu, our Patupaihereri. That is their rainbow bridge and how they get from one place to another. So it, um, <clears throat> my mountain is the, one of the fairy mountains, Pironia. 
So we had the rainbow above, we had the rainbow within us, which is our energy centers, our chakras. But we also have the rainbow that acknowledges all the crystal beings. And within Aotearoa, we have the green stone, which is the heart stone, which is that connection also to ancient Lemuria. So we know the green stone is the Po Namu. Po is the central pillar of light between heaven and earth. Na is of that, Mu is of Lemuria. So our green stone is our heart stone, but it actually originates from the ancient Lemuria. Um, the waters we know as the liquid love of our mother earth. So the beings within the waters, such as our Tahora, the whale, is our record keeper. Uh, the DNA, uh, I see that as the divine natural assignment, one could say. Uh, and so Paikia is based on the mythologies of how our tūpuna, our ancestors, arrived here in Aotearoa. And those, those stories are our histories. Those stories are, are brought alive through song, through haka, through storytelling, through theatre. That is our way of keeping our culture alive, keeping our customs and traditions and honouring everything, every living being that is sacred to us. So with the story of Paiki and the movie, that was a beautiful way to bring out one of our mythologies, one of our legends to the world for a deeper understanding for yourself and for it to have touched many people's hearts. So yeah. how would you say your culture perceives the whale? So when you saw the whale, or let's say about your culture first and then you personally. So when your culture sees the whale, is there significance? How significant is that? Is there a message? Is there a certain relation that happens within you know, the tribe as you relate to the whale. It's the being. It's the being that that originates from the stars. So it's gifted from the stars and birthed upon the earth within the waters. It is. It holds the memory. It has the mana, the mana, <clears throat> the ha, the living breath that we all witness when it when it births and it comes up for its breath, and the sound, the sound of that the vibration that received, but also it represents undiluted love, aroha. We all know it as that gentle being. Uh, it connects, it's a heartfelt connection that we as a culture hold deep within us from memories of uh, our ancestors, our tūpuna. Uh, tango tukuihos, the treasures of our ancestors. It's the um, whakatoki, the proverbs that they have with the, the tohora. But I'd really like to bring in another aspect of tohora that I shared with you briefly about the kauri. The kauri tree is our, is our rangatira of the forest. It's... Um, we, we know it as Tane Mahuta. Tane Mahuta is uh, the god of the forest who we acknowledge as I did through our journey today. Going into the forest, I acknowledge the, the god of the forest that we know as Tane Mahuta. So within Aotearoa, we have this beautiful Kauri tree. When you look at the word Kauri, you get Ka is to activate. You get the AU as a universal symbol for gold. And the RI is vibration. So it's about the Cody means to activate the golden vibration. Cody has a beautiful golden sap that for us we use also for clearing, for blessings, for clearing negative energies. But it has the trunk of the tree has um, bark like barnacles that fall off the tree. So it was just of late, probably the la last eight years, that we've had a 
an illness that it's affected our kauri trees within our great forests of Aotearoa. It was called a dieback. And so the trees were dying. And the scientists all came together and tried to work out what, what are we going to do about this? What is the best way forward? So they gathered some of our Māori healers together. And they were sort of like looking at the different healing trees that we grow, that should be grown around the kauri. But then there was a beautiful kaumatua. A kaumatua is a respected elder. And here's a gentleman, Toby Ashby from Northland. And he remembered a, a beautiful story, a legend that came back to his memory. And so when we look deeper into our beautiful stories and legends and, and proverbs, we find the clues. And so when he looked deeper into the story, it was about the Cody and the whale, the Tohora, were best friends because the whale walked upon the earth. Until the invitation from Tangaroa, the god of the ocean, was gifted to all the creatures within the forest that he was opening the door for that to become part of, of the world that anyone was invited to. So the Tohora, the whale, approached his best friend, the Kodi tree, and, and said to him, I'd really like to explore the realm of Tangaroa. I'm feeling that that might be a new adventure for myself and I'd really like you to join me since you're my dearest friend. But the Cody tree said, no, 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 I'm very happy where I am, but you go off. But I will gift you the bark of my tree so we will always be connected. So they became, the, the bark was gifted to the Tahora the whale that was very much like the barnacles and so off the whale swam. Now, we've noticed, but also the sound of the whale is heard through the leaves, the breeze that blows through the leaves of the trees. So the Cody tree sounds like the whale's song. So suddenly there's whales that started beaching onto the shore. And that was devastating for a lot of us. And to have a deeper understanding, why is this happening? But it's just of late that they realized that the whale had the medicine to heal this disease that the Cody was suffering from called the dieback. So after the whales had beached themselves, then they were buried. And from different parts of the whale's being, um, they were able to put the medicine of that around the roots of the Cody tree that has now created the healing for the Cody tree. So now our Cody trees are now thriving. So that's the, that's the magic of our culture too, is to go back and look back at the different stories and legends that have been shared and look deeper into it and find the solutions. So to, um, it's like our, our ancestors were um, wanting to graduate a generation of nature smart solutionaries uh, within our people and, and sharing that with generations. And so that's what we are finding now. When you hearken to the way of nature, uh, the remedies come. And of course, our Mother Earth, our Mama Tuanuku, she has provided us with all her pharmacy and her pantry. And as we look out there, that's my seafood department, uh, but also the honouring of all the beings that are part of the water world, because there's no separation. And as I said, it's the liquid love of the mother. So also when we hold ceremony in the waters, when we do karakia, when we go out to be with the whales, the medicine is through the karakia and it sings to the waters. And the waters touch all lands of this world. So here we are, are honouring all the different cultures, all the different countries, all the different continents through karakia, through our, our vibration into the waters. So mm -hmm. when you mentioned the karakia, you're talking about the sacred sound, yes? Yes, yes. So 
in your eyes, what does happen when a sacred sound then enters the water? That is a communication from your heart, from your being to the waters, the, all the crystalline memories, everything that happens. And then there's a backwards communication as well. Meaning the, we receive as well as give. I think when you also look at uh, the word in Māori for spirit, is called wairua. Wai is water. Rua is the two waters. So we have the, the waters that come from Ranginui, the heavens, and we have the waters from our Mother Earth that we know as the waterfalls, as her breast milk, the spring waters are her breast milk, the rivers. So it's those two waters combining, once again, the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine. And those waters are what we call the wairua, the spirit. So the spirit is also our waters within that sing, that radiate, that vibrate, that send out that vibration and frequency. And the song of the whales, do you perceive it? You, you said you could hear it in the, in the leaves of the cowrie tree. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there any other reference to the song of the whales within your culture? Right, so when we look at Ranginui, when we look at the word also, we get instruments. So Ranginui, there is all the different sons of Ranginui and Mamatunuku. When Mother Earth and when Ranginui and Papatunuku were together in a deep, deep embrace, they loved each other so much. But there was no light in that world and they had all their children. So suddenly at one position, some light entered. And so the children saw that spark of light and thought, goodness me, We'd really like to be able to stand. We'd like to be able to grow rather than being in this cramped world without light. So they they came together. They had a hui, we'd like to call it, where they decided that we must we must separate our parents to bring light into this world so we can grow and... Um, mm, be on purpose, do what, what our purpose is for. And so in that, there was um, a gathering, a conversation where some were for it and some were against it. But in the end, it was Tani Mahuta, God of the Forest, who said that he would, out of all of them, be the one that would, he would stand on his back and push up with his legs and do that separation. From that separation... Some of the other brothers were torn and were revengeful in regards to what had happened. They, their love was so great that they were very, very upset with that separation. So you had um, Tuma Toinga, Tafiri Matia, God of the Winds. You had them uh, in defiance and wanting uh, revenge for that. Um, so with that separation you had what we call the tears from the heavens coming down to um, grieve for that separation. Um, there's, there's so much more to that story, but the waters uh, signify that, that grief, that sadness as well, but also the blessings of light coming into the world that we could all prosper and all grow and all be... So I remember when we first talked about you coming here to Morea to be with us and swim with whales, mm -hmm. and you said you're coming to be with your tupuna, your mm -hmm. ancestors. Mm -hmm. Can you just explain how that, how do you see the whales as, as part of your lineage? Uh, the whales are also what we call our kaitiaki. Uh, our kaitiaki are our spiritual guardians. So. When our ancestors sailed from Hawaiki Nui, Hawaiki Roa, Hawaiki Paumamo, the mystical lands of Hawaii, they all, each waka came with a captain as well as a medicine man, a um, tohunga, we call it. And so that person was responsible for doing the karakias, for safe passage, for reading the, the tohu, 
the signs from the heavens, for reading the waves, the clouds. For that, they would get the signs coming from the ocean, such as the whales. So the whales would would arrive, would send out the, the messages on the inner net, one could say, to the tohunga as to safe passage. Um, so whales to us have always been our sacred spiritual angels, in a sense, to our guardians of the waters. So uh, that to us was a, a tohu, a sign that there was safe passage coming this way. So, you know, wherever the fishermen are on the waters, if, you know, they would do karakia and they would honour, they would look to those tohu as we did on our on our journey, you would see the, the crew on the boat and they would take note of the direction that the whales were in, uh, how many were in that that group. Um, they were reading the whales. Remember, he would go forward and he would connect deeper with the whale to, to let him know that were we invited into their living room, so to speak. So it's innate in all indigenous nations that have that deep connection with the oneness and and for you now entering the water and being with them and they had this very powerful moment of two whales male and female yes, yes. coming up to us and really look us in the eye and it was so so profound mm. so how was your experience from all this beautiful sacred background of relationship to to the water, to the whales. How was this experience for you when you were in the water seeing the eye of the whale? I think it was such a beautiful um, experience first, first and foremost, to be here with our pod, with the sacred circle. And thank you both for facilitating and being, part, you know, calling us together. Um, also for the divine design to create this divine alignment but everyone everyone has been part of this and to to have um, aligned with the crew with the captain Mahe, with Kevin with with Sham it was just such a with such ease and grace and and every part was honored from from them honoring the opportunity for us to be able to stop at a certain part for that honouring of you leading a meditation, for you asking me to do a karakia. Every aspect is part of this um, unfoldment. Uh, we'd call that in within Te Kanga Māori. Uh, it's all meant to be. It is all in divine order. And for us then to to be guided out onto the waters and for us to have that confidence, that beautiful respect and love of their culture and their wisdoms, um, but also for us to be really connected as a, as a team. Uh, the word team, I look at trust everyone around me when you break the word up. Um, but to enter the water and to be I felt so safe due to it wasn't something I'd done before, but I'd had some practice um, a couple of days before. But it was just that feeling of we were really a pod. We were coming together, together to get her. Um, and there was such a safety and security, but there was also for myself that delight of being able to look under the water breathe properly and feel so nurtured by you all and that you were all uh, wishing for me to really experience that joy of seeing the whales for my very, very first time underwater and to be taken closer, all of you gathered around me. From It was, uh, I think it's hard to express, but it's just the excitement of the cells within me uh, the vibration, the resonation of, of that connection with them and looking into the eye of the whale, looking into that galaxy, looking into the allness, uh, the omnipresence, 
um, it's hard to describe. It's just the absolute um, feeling of bliss. And you just are a floating love. It's nothing that I think I could ever... Um, there's nothing that matches that. But also being in the watery realm that... Uh, that floating... <sighs> I'm trying to find words for that experience. Um, but it's nothing I could ever compare it with in my life. And I'm just so grateful for that to have, uh, for my ancestors to have created this opportunity for my celestial teams to have brought us all together for this metaphysical, magical moments that will hold a divine memory for me forever. So yes, I, I'm just grateful for this massive opportunity. Thank you so much. And would you give a message to anybody watching somewhere else in the world that's maybe thinking about going to see the whales or even is not sure if, you know, they're near the whales, but as far as them connecting, is there anything from your culture to them that you would give as a message of increased contact, increased way of, of connecting with the whales through themselves? I, I bring it all down to the one word, te aroha. Te aroha in our culture is, is love. Aro is focus, concentrate. Oha is of the abundance and ha is of the breath. So aroha is the abundance of breath but also it's what you receive within your cells that is truly of a, it's undiluted love. It's the highest um, expression of divine. Um, I think for a person to open the door to the opportunity, uh, if it, I think first for, for myself, um, the alignment unfolded for me so it was a suggestion first by someone and then it was just sitting with that and seeing how things unfolded and they unfolded for me with such ease and grace um, that I knew that everything was divinely aligned so stepping forward into that opportunity for myself was the first uh, signal for my celestial teams to come in and to assist with opening the door further and making those deeper connections and stepping forward with self-esteem, with, with having to step out of a comfort zone and bring to me my very own, bring to me what I've wished for, for as, as a child, you know, um, knowing of whale movies and, and just like being so touched my heart has been so touched by different movies, especially um, Paikia. And so going, uh, seeing that movie again after the suggestion and going, oh my gosh, this is resonating so deeply for me. And then taking those next steps and seeing those next steps just flowing easily. The path was just opening up. So that was, uh, there was no doubting that this was uh, meant to be part of my earth walk. Uh, and thank you for making that so easy too with our connection, with our first kōrero with each other. Then the excitement started to become real for me. Uh, and then arriving, and um, thank you so much, Anika, for your presence and your uh, divine feminine with that nurturing um, and your deep inner tuition to assist each of us that were brought together to really fully be here in that heart, heart presence. And with the heart, you get the word earth as well. And the art of the heart is the earth, you know, so we play with that. Well, I play with words all the time, but that really is a, that deep, deep heart connection to our new pod and um, 
just really being in love, falling in love for me. It was to fall in love with this new adventure, with this experience, with this, uh, with opening the water world into my world, because I'd never, I'd never had this experience. So, yeah. It was an absolute delight to have you with us. It was so so magical to have you do different different chants and ceremonies, and. I want to invite everybody, if you travel to Aotearoa, New Zealand, our dear Pua is doing sacred journeys there. If you ever travel to New Zealand, just make sure you find her, but she wants to be found through the synchronicity. <laughs> so, uh, but he is, I, I, I know when I go to New Zealand next time, I will join, I will join with you. And, and explore some of the secret sites, even connected to dolphins and whales there. Uh, we are also thinking about just bringing a group there and make a retreat there with you. So I'm, I'm really grateful I can introduce you to everybody that's interested in dolphins and whales and feels the aroha, the love that flows between our hearts. So I'm really, really grateful to have gotten to know you and, and that you're here with us and it I hope it lasts you know not just one but many lifetimes thank you and just to mm. conclude would you like to share another one of your beautiful uh, can you remind me the word again the kara kara kia goes in kara kia I'd just like to say that I I've come up with a, a name for my journeys and and my journeys have always been with the um the mystery and the magic, people are guided, led to me, and as you say, the synchronicities, it's been the only way it could be. And so I kept thinking, hmm, what's an interesting word in te reo, but also within sacred? And so I get te wai, the waters, wai phi, P-H-I, te wai phi or pua wai. So, <laughs> So that's going to be my new tourism name. You are guided to me through through the divine Wi-Fi, through the inner net, through the waters, the song, the spirit, the memory, the signature, the soul of the sacred geometry. As multidimensional beings that we are, we will be, make that connection. So that's <laughs> that's my new... Uh, and yes, you'll find me on Waiheke Island. So I look forward to however things align with divine. So I will do a closing karakia now. Thank you and thank you everyone. Kia ora. He hanore, he karore, he hallelujah ki te atua. He maunga rongo, he manaki, he atawhai, ki rongi i te matu o te whenua. He whakaro pai, he whakaro, he whakaro roa, ki ngā tangata katoa. Nō reira, ki a tau, ki a tātou, ka tō te atawhai o tō tātou a riki, a ihu karaiti me te aroha o te atua, me te whiwhinga tahitanga ki te wairua tapu. Ake, 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 amene. Kia ora. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Until the next time. Okay. Kia ora. Hello, everybody. Kia ora.